Linux file system permissions are based on the Unix, POSIX, or Portable Operating System Interface structure for access control. The command to modify file and directory permissions is chmod. This command can modify permissions numerically or through the use of addition and subtraction operators. Numerically, POSIX permissions take the following format. 4 is read, 2 is write, 1 is execute, and 0 is none. By combining these numbers and aggregating or adding them together, you can combine combinations of read, write, and execute with the chmod command. For example, you could aggregate permissions numerically like so. 7 would be the combination of read, write, and execute, or 4 plus 2 plus 1. 6 would be the combination of read and write, or 4 plus 2. 5 would be the combination of read and execute, or 4 plus 1. And 3 would be the combination of write and execute, or 2 plus 1. There are three basic categories when dealing with an object's permissions. They are user, group, and other. The user and group are self-explanatory. The other category is like the Windows Everyone account. It is for those who are neither the user or the group. Permissions can be assigned numerically to each category. Example, chmod777banana.txt means that this text file has all permissions for user. In other words, read which is 4, write which is 2, and execute which is 1, or 4 plus 2 plus 1, or 7. The same applies for the group and other. They have read which is 4, write which is 2, and execute which is 1, so if you add them all together, it's 7, 7, 7. All permissions for user, all permissions for group, and all permissions for other. Here's another example. chmod764banana.txt means this text file has for user, read, write, and execute, for group, read and write, and for other, read. Note, remember that for directories, the execute permission is required as well as read in order for that directory to be browsable and traversable. In other words, if you were to apply the read permission for a user or a group, but not the execute, even though the user had read or the group had read permission on that directory, they would not be able to enter the directory or browse it. In addition to the regular POSIX permissions of read, write, and execute, there are three special permissions. They hold the same place value as the regular permissions and are set UID, which sets the user ID on execute, set GID, which sets the group ID on execute, and the sticky bit, which puts the directory in sticky mode. The set UID and set GID permissions allow users and groups who are not the owner or group of a file to execute that file as though they were. When the sticky bit is set on a directory, only that directory's owner or root can delete or rename the directory's file. Numerically, you prefix special permissions to regular ones like so. chmod7444 banana.txt means that this text file has the set UID turned on, the set GID turned on, and the sticky bit turned on. That's that first 7, remember 4 plus 2 plus 1. The remaining three 4s mean that the user has read, the group has read, and other has read permission. Here's another example. chmod4762 banana.txt means that this file has the set UID turned on, the set GID turned off, the sticky bit turned off. In other words, 4, which would be read on normal permissions, is simply the set UID on special permissions. Now the remaining three digits, 7, 6, and 2, mean that the user has read, write, and execute, group has read and write, and other has write. In addition to setting the permissions numerically, we can use addition and subtraction operators like so chmod u minus w would remove write from the user. If it were to chmod g plus wx, I would be adding write and execute to the group. Were I to chmod o plus rwx, I would be adding read, write, and execute to other. Special permissions can also be utilized and modified this way. So if I were to chmod u plus s, I would be adding the set uid. And if I were to chmod g plus s, I would be adding the set gid. And were I to say chmod O minus T, I would be removing the sticky bit. Additional permission options are chmod A plus RW. In this example, I would be adding read and write to all, or the combination of user, group, and other. Another example of this kind of syntax would be chmod A minus X. In this case, I'm removing execute from all, or again, the combination of user, group, and other. Other types of syntax would include chmod u equals rwx, comma go equals r. In this example, I'm setting read, write, and execute on user, and read and write on group and other. And still another example of syntax would be chmod u equals rx, comma 
geo equals. If I do geo equals and leave it open ended, then I'm simply removing any permissions that were set on group and other. So this complete command or line of syntax would mean that I'm setting read and execute on user and I'm removing all permissions on group and other. Another useful option is dash capital R. It allows you to modify objects recursively. That is changing permissions on all objects in a directory and its subdirectories. Example, write to use the command chmod capital R777 test. This would grant read, write, and execute permission to all the files within the directory test, as well as all the files within any of its subdirectories. In addition to chmod, two other commands are necessary to configure POSIX permissions. chown, which would change the owner of a file or folder, and chgroup, to change the group of a file or folder. Let's take a look at these commands in action. All right, let's take a look at some of these POSIX permissions. And I'll open a command prompt and let me make it nice and large here so it's hopefully easy on your eyes. Zoom in, zoom in. There, okay. So let's look at my directory contents. This is my home directory right now. And I'm going to make a directory. So sudo mk uh, dir test. We'll just call the directory test, all right. And if I list the contents, according to my umask, my current umask, which is 0022, remember that's, those are the default permissions, um, and it's the inverse, so basically what would be removed. Um, when I make test, notice that as root, I have full permission, or 7, and then here as the, you know, the group, I have read and execute, and as other, I have read and execute. Okay, and that's just, you know, the right was removed, and the right was removed. And then here, none of the you know, nothing was removed, so I have seven. And here, nothing was removed. So, if I were to set you know the, the set UID, the set JID, or the sticky bit, they would be set. So let's look at changing and modifying permissions here. Um, if I wanted to give full permission to the root, you know, in this case, me, the owner, and to the group, which is all, right now also root, and also to other, I would just say sudo ch mod seven 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 test all right and then let's see how that would display all right so now look at test I have seven read write execute or four plus two plus one seven read write execute or four plus two plus one and seven read write execute or four plus two plus one let's say that I wanted to do all permission for the you know the user I wanted to do read and write for um, the group and I wanted to do read only for other. In that case, I would do sudo chmod all permission for the user, um, you know, in other words, read plus write plus execute would be 4 plus 2 plus 1 or 7. All permission for the group, or excuse me, it wasn't all, we said a read and write permission, would simply be 4 plus 2, that's read and write, so that would be 6. And then for other, we were only going to give them read permission, that's just 4. Okay, and again, I'll, let me go ahead and specify test and We'll clear and we'll do a long listing again. So if I do that again, notice how numerically it just set those permissions. Seven, read, write, execute for you know the user. Six, the combination of read and write or four plus two for the group. And four, just read for other. Okay, so that's one way to do things. Um, in addition, I can also set um, you know the set UID and the set GID. And the sticky bit, um, I can do that numerically with numbers if I want. So if I wanted to do sudo chmod and let me do 7777 on test. Okay. And if I do that, notice that, notice how this has changed from rwx, rwx, rwx to, in this case, lowercase s, lowercase s, and lowercase t. So this lowercase s is the set UID, that's the set GID, and that's the sticky bit. And remember that the set UID allows, you know, another user who's not root in this case, or that user to temporarily run this as root. And the set GID is the same thing with the group. It allows someone who's a member of a group other than root to temporarily run that as root. And the sticky bit just simply means that if I set that on a directory and it's turned on, um, you know, Unless I'm the owner of that directory, I can't delete or rename files. Okay, so that's all that, that does there. But notice how that looks. Um, now, what if I were to, that's, what if I were to remove execute? 
such that I only had read and write. But I, I left the three special permissions turned on. Let's see how that would look. So sudo chmod, and I'm going to do uh, 7. I'll keep all the special permissions, but I'm just going to do 666 on test, and that'll just be read and write without execute. Now notice that the S's and the T were, you know, they were lowercase. Now notice what happened. They're capital S, capital S, and capital T. So when I see that, and it, you know, in a permissions in a long listing, I know that in this case execute is not set. You know, I don't have an extra place value the way POSIX is set up in, in Linux and Unix, but I don't need it. I, I can tell by whether that's uppercase or lowercase whether or not execute has been set on that directory or on that file. So being uppercase S, I know that execute is not set. Again, if I were to set it back, sudo chmod 7777 test. And now notice, once again, they are lowercase, okay? And that's that's numerically. Now, what about, remember we were saying you could also use addition and subtraction operators. So let's take a look at that. Let's say that I want to remove um, some of these special permissions. Um, if I were to do that, I could do sudo and chmod. And let's say that I want to remove the special permission here, okay, the, the set UID. If I wanted to do that, Look at where it is. This is user, this is group, and this is other. So it would be U, this would be G, and this would be O. So to remove the set UID, I would simply say sudo chmod, and then I would do U minus S. And let me specify the directory name. All right, and if I do that, I go back and let's look at tests. Now it's just read, write, and execute. The set UID is no longer set. All right, looking at this example, if that was U and this is G, we would do the same thing, right? So to remove the set GID, I would just do sudo chmod. And in this case, I want to use G minus S and then specify the directory name. And let me list the contents, okay? And so now read, write, execute for user read write execute for group. I've removed the set UID and I've removed the set GID. And what about the sticky bit? If I want to turn off the sticky bit, it's the same thing, but this is the other category, right? This is the user column, right? This is the group column. This is the other column. So to do that, uh, sudo chmod, and then I'm going to do O minus T for the sticky bit, and I just want to specify the directory name. And let me list the directory contents now. And notice now I'm back to read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. Again, let's say that I want to remove execute and write from other. So um, if I did that now, the directory wouldn't be browsable. So sudo chmod, um, this is sort of a snafu, but let me do, just to illustrate it, we'll do o minus. Um, read or let me do write excuse me write and execute and I'll specify the directory name okay now if I do that as a directory you know I might be thinking I'm making test read only but remember that I also need the execute permission to be able to browse a folder or directory so the bare minimum you know on a file I could do that but on a, on a directory the bare minimum permission I need if I were, wanted to give other the ability to go into that folder, browse it, and read some files or, or things in that folder, I would have to reset the execute permission back there. Okay, um, and I could do that if I wanted to. I could say sudo chmod, and if I wanted to do it numerically, um, you know, I could simply say if I were to only use three digits for user, group, and other, then if I want full permission on root, I want to keep those permissions read write execute that's going to be 4 plus 2 plus 1 or 7 okay now on group let's say that I want to do group you know I don't want to give them execute I just want to give them read and write well read is 4 write is 2 so add them together 4 plus 2 that's 6 so here at the user we have read write execute or 7 here we have read and write which is in this case 6 and then lastly I want to give read and execute so in this case that would be 5 Remember that read is 4 and execute is 1. And then I just want to specify the directory name. And I'll do another long listing here. 
And again, so notice if I do that, now I've got for the user, read, write, execute. I have for the group, read, write. And I have for other, read and execute. So that means that that directory is browsable. Okay. Now, let's say I wanted to change the owner of that directory. I could do that. I could say sudo and chown. And I'm going to use, I'll, let me change it to my, um, I use sudo to create it. And because of that, root owns it. But let's say I want to take ownership of it. I could do sudo chnc germany and test. Okay, and if I do that, notice I'm going to do a long listing, but before I do, notice that root was the owner here, that's the user. So let me clear, do a long listing. And now that I've used the chown command, look, ch germany now owns that directory. So I'll work on directories or files. And I could do the same thing with groups, guys. Um, if I wanted to. All right, here are some groups and things, but let's say I wanted to make admin the group there. I could do that. I could do sudo and uh, chgrp to change the group. And I'm going to say admin, and I'm going to specify the directory test. Let me do a long listing. And if I did that, notice that with the chown command, see Germany is the owner, but with the chgroup command, admin is you know the group for that directory. Let's say that I wanted to make it me. I do sudo uh, chgrp, and I could specify. Um, in this case, um, I'll use I'll use C Germany there for test. Let me clear and we'll list the directory contents. Okay, and so now it's C Germany all the way down. So th those are just some of the POSIX permissions commands: chmod, chown, chgroup. You can do it numerically. You can you know, use it with addition and subtraction operators from the console, from the command prompt. And that's kind of my favorite way. It's probably sometimes seems like the easiest way, but of course I could also use Nautilus. Now here's the thing. If it's going to be in my folder, um, I can set permissions on things in my folder with Nautilus. Um, let me go here and I can use my tabs here and pull things down and I can do read and write and, and so forth. If I'm going to do anything that you know, at the root level or outside of my home folder or something created with sudo, I want to launch uh, Nautilus with root privileges. And a quick way to do that, if I hold down Alt and press F2, let me do this right now. And I'm just going to say um, GK sudo on Nautilus. And input my password. And this will give me a Nautilus with root privileges. Now I can go anywhere in the file system. And if I wanted to set things graphically, let me go back to uh, the home folder and see Germany. And we'll go back to uh, test here. Let me go to properties, and then here's permissions. And then so I can change the ownership, you know, now that I have root privileges. Um, for folder access, create and delete files, access files, list files only. I can choose those options for file access. You know, I can specify any options there that were. Um, you know, I mean, I can graphically do a lot of the things I did from the command prompt, just like you can in Windows. But again, if you folks are, you know, studying for that Linux Plus, um, you want to really focus on the command prompt access. Um, that and you know, sometimes that ends up being the more, the easier way of you know, once you get used to it, of setting permissions. But yes, just so that you know, you can do it graphically, and if that's your preference. Okay, so just. You know, different kinds of permissions and settings and group and uh, user and ownership of files and folders in uh, Linux.